sometimes sticky willy it's known as. Um, it's a really common weed basically but also edible you can feel because of its texture because of its stickiness you wouldn't want to eat it raw but again wash it steam it and kind of treat it like you would any green like a spinach or a or a steamed green apparently it's also really good if you just wash it and then steep it in cold water and drink the liquid after kind of 12 hours it gives a really kind of fresh green sort of taste to water um, evidence for effectiveness of herbal medicines. It's a really interesting directory. And elder, so this is this is elder and these are elder flowers. Mm. So apparently the flowers indicate the start of summer and the berries that form indicate the end of summer in, in England. And it makes a really delicious cordial. You've probably had an elder flower cordial where you can just make it very simply by um, pouring boiling water over the flowers adding some uh, lemon juice or orange juice and citric acid and quite a lot of sugar to preserve it but hey sugar is uh, definitely better than most artificial sweeteners are for you um, and it makes a delicious drink what we're going to try doing when we get back whoever would like to join me is making elderflower fritters which is another traditional use where you dip the flowers in a batter and fry them um, and then you hot, you don't need the stalk, you use the stalk to kind of hold it and eat the battered flowers, but it's also delicious. And let me tell you what elderflower is used for medicinally. So elderberry and elderflower extract have a long history of use for the relief of symptoms of the common cold and flu, chills and sore throats. There's also traditional folk medicine use of the flowers in the treatment of diabetes. However, there's limited clinical evidence to show that the berries may help alleviate and shorten the duration of cold and flu symptoms. And no studies have been carried out on the flower extract. But hey, it doesn't mean it can hurt you, just no <laughs> evidence yet. Um, let's carry on along the hedgerow. As we see more elderflower, it'd be great if you want to try and pick a sprig. If everyone could carry a, a flower back with them. When you see one, you can read it. <laughs> Yeah, so stop it. Obviously you need gloves and scissors to sting you, because they will sting you. 
uh, you can pick them and use them like spinach or like, like a green. So uh, again, if you like wash them carefully and then steam them, the sting disappears as soon as they've been steamed. And again, they're incredibly rich in vitamin C and really good for you. There are lots of nettle remedies as well. I'll have this book in the kitchen when we get back along with a few other guides that I've brought along um, if anyone wants to have a kind of look at it. So I'm not going to read too much of this because I know you've also been to the back of it as well. This is also a hazelnut <laughs> tree. I don't see any fruit on it yet. Um, it, it might be that it's got no fruit set this year. Or this is it. that people can identify as the black ring. So come mid to late August, this will be, or you can see the flowers forming here. These will be absolutely covered in black rings. And this is a great place to pick as well because you're away from any roads, you're in a sunny spot. to follow um, which uh, try to maintain its good name so in the recent past there's been a kind of spate of professional foragers especially going out more into the countryside or into woodland and stripping away whole plants especially things like wild garlic has become very fashionable and then they're selling them to restaurants because there's this kind of vogue for foraged food um, so the, the kind of pr conservation principles apply, which is never strip a whole plant or single bush of all its fruit or all its flowers. Always leave some for other people, always leave some for insects, for birds, for animals and other wildlife. And just make sure that you're kind of being reasonable in what you're doing, so that you're leaving something behind, not only for other people, but also so the plant can continue to survive because birds eating the berries and spreading the seeds are how the, the plant, uh, plant populations continue. Um, so yeah, it's a shame that that started to happen. <coughs>
be an amazing Mahonia to come and harvest. I think these need a teeny bit longer, they're not quite right. <coughs> Sorry, Colin is getting some water. Um, yeah, this will be, a, again, parks are a great place because you're away from roads and from traffic fumes and from things that kind of immediately pollute uh, the surface. <coughs> take a few bits of you can try them if you want to but they are a bit sour for most taste um, how can you tell what they're like <coughs> they go a kind of dark bluish purple color instead of that kind of greeny okay color and when you burst them they'll have a they'll have a bright red juice I went to my garden after yeah. doing this with you the other day. And what did you think? Yeah. It's not like I like sour things. Yeah. It's really sour. But then I giggled and it said it's loads of them. Yeah. <laughs> see why it's called bread and butter it's almost got a kind of butter like it's edge sticky. to the flavor yeah mm. almost like a kind of sticky texture to it yeah and the the uh, hawthorn fruit the fruit the berries are not nice to eat uh, raw they're very flowery in their texture and they don't taste of much but again they make a really good jelly especially mixed with apple or something like that
so we're almost back to, to gas. We're just going to go out through that gate there, uh, out of the park and back to, um, back to the conference. I just wanted to stop one last, one last specimen. This is a cherry tree, as you can probably tell. Uh, it's got quite a good load of fruit set on it which is great to see that big rainstorm last week took a lot of um, the newly forming fruit off trees. I was really like, ah, oh, no. Loads of things looked like they were gonna be, it was gonna be a really bad year. Uh, but this one's looking okay. They've probably got about a month before they'll be ripe. They won't get really, really fat and fleshy like a kind of commercial cherry will. They'll be quite sort of thin fleshed and a little bit, again, a little bit sourer than you might like expect from a cherry that you eat buy in the market but I think they're delicious and again they make a really delicious jam because just that sort of slight sourness works really well with the sugar in jam. Cherry is almost always really frustratingly um, the fruits almost always out of reach um, uh, <laughs> hence why those scissor lift things are called cherry pickers because you almost always need assistance to get up and pick a cherry so I mean, this looks like it will have a little bit that's in reach. It's also, you also have to do battle with uh, wood pigeons and, uh, and other birds to get at cherries. Quite often they'll clear a whole tree. You'll see like a tree just completely covered in a flock of birds that are just eating away at it. So, yeah. So what, if, I mean, how many, how many different edible plants is that that we've seen on this, what, 250 meter? Stretch seven was that seven? 19. Yeah, <laughs> the nineteen. Yeah, four hundred and fifty-three. <laughs> so I hope you're all astounded. And like I say, if you uh, have we got quite have we got a fair bit of I've got some batter mixed up in the kitchen. We just need to go back and wash our elderflower, and then we'll we'll fry them up and. Uh, you know, if not everybody wants to come into the kitchen and do that, we'll try, we'll, we'll, bat we'll cook everything we've got and we'll bring them out and, and share them. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> a whole branch. Scissors could be good. Okay, well, one is, that will be plenty for you, hopefully. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.